Hi friends, I'm Annie F. Downs. Let's read the Gospels. The Gospels are the first four books of the New Testament in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the stories of Jesus Christ's life on earth, the friendships, the parables, the sacrifices, the meals, the miracles. Each month we read all four books, so go ahead, subscribe today. Join us as we read the Gospels together. Here's how this works. I'll read three chapters to you. You can listen or read along in your own Bible, and then I'll pray, and that's it. Today is Good Friday, the day we remember the death of Jesus on the cross. It feels weird to say the day we celebrate, but you know what I mean. Today is that day, the day that Jesus was crucified, died, and was buried. As we read today, we will walk with Jesus into Jerusalem, and tomorrow, the Saturday between the death and resurrection, we will read Luke's retelling of this part of the story. And then it's Easter Sunday, and we start with the book of John. I encourage you to invite your friends to join us starting on Easter to hear the book of John. It will take a week, just like Luke has, but what a beautiful book to begin on Easter Sunday. And today we get to continue through the book of Luke, which I love. So today is April 7th, day 7, Good Friday, and I will be reading Luke chapters 19 through 21. And this month I'm reading from the message. Luke 19. Then Jesus entered and walked through Jericho. There was a man there, his name Zacchaeus, the head tax man and quite rich. He wanted desperately to see Jesus, but the crowd was in his way. He was a short man and couldn't see over the crowd. So he ran on ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus when he came by. When Jesus got to the tree, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, hurry down. Today is my day to be a guest in your home. Zacchaeus scrambled out of the tree, hardly believing his good luck, delighted to take Jesus home with him. Everyone who saw the incident was indignant and grumped, what business does he have getting cozy with this crook? Zacchaeus just stood there a little stunned. He stammered apologetically, Master, I give away half my income to the poor, and if I'm caught cheating, I pay four times the damages. Jesus said, Today is salvation day in this home. Here he is, Zacchaeus, son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to find and restore the lost. While he had their attention, and because they were getting close to Jerusalem by this time, and expectation was building that God's kingdom would appear any minute, he told this story. There was once a man descended from a royal house who needed to make a long trip back to headquarters to get authorization for his rule and then return. But first, he called 10 servants together, gave them each a sum of money, and instructed them, operate with this until I return. But the citizens there hated him. So they sent a commission with a signed petition to oppose his rule. We don't want this man to rule us. When he came back, bringing the authorization of his rule, he called those 10 servants to whom he had given the money to find out how they had done. The first said, Master, I doubled your money. He said, Good servant, great work. Because you've been trustworthy in this small job, I'm making you governor of 10 towns. The second said, Master, I made 50% profit on your money. He said, I'm putting you in charge of five towns. The next servant said, Master, here's your money safe and sound. I kept it hidden in the cellar. To tell you the truth, I was a little afraid. I know you have high standards and hate sloppiness and don't suffer fools gladly. He said, you're right that I don't suffer fools gladly and you've acted the fool. Why didn't you at least invest the money in securities so I would have gotten a little interest on it? Then he said to those standing there, take the money from him and give it to the servant who doubled my stake. They said, but master, he already has double. He said, that's what I mean. Risk your life and get more than you ever dreamed of. Play it safe and end up holding the bag. As for these enemies of mine who petitioned against my rule, clear them out of here. I don't want to see their faces around here again. After saying these things, Jesus headed straight up to Jerusalem. When he got near Bethphage and Bethany at the mountain called Olives, he sent off two of the disciples with instructions. Go to the village across from you. As soon as you enter, you'll find a colt tethered, one that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says anything, asks, what are you doing? Say, his master needs him. The two left and found it just as he said. As they were untying the colt, its owners said, What are you doing untying the colt? They said, His master needs him. They brought the colt to Jesus. Then throwing their coats on its back, they helped Jesus get on. As he rode, the people gave him a grand welcome, throwing their coats on the street. Right at the crest, where Mount Olives begins its descent, the whole crowd of disciples burst into enthusiastic praise over all the mighty works they had witnessed. Blessed is he who comes, the King, in God's name. All's well in heaven, glory in the high places. Some Pharisees from the crowd told him, Teacher, get your disciples under control. But he said, 
If they kept quiet, the stones would do it for them, shouting praise. When the city came into view, he wept over it. If you had only recognized this day and everything that was good for you. But now it's too late. In the days ahead, your enemies are going to bring up their heavy artillery and surround you, pressing in from every side. They'll smash you and your babies on the pavement. Not one stone will be left intact. All this because you didn't recognize and welcome God's personal visit. Going into the temple, he began to throw out everyone who had set up shop, selling everything and anything. He said, It's written in scripture, my house is a house of prayer. You have turned it into a religious bazaar. From then on, he taught each day in the temple. The high priests, religion scholars, and the leaders of the people were trying their best to find a way to get rid of him. But with the people hanging on every word he spoke, they couldn't come up with anything. Luke 20. One day he was teaching the people in the temple, proclaiming the message. The high priests, religion scholars, and leaders confronted him and demanded, Show us your credentials. Who authorized you to speak and act like this? Jesus answered, First, let me ask you a question about the baptism of John. Who authorized it, heaven or humans? They were on the spot and knew it. They pulled back into a huddle and whispered, If we say heaven, he'll ask us why we didn't believe him. If we say humans, the people will tear us limb from limb, convinced as they are that John was God's prophet. They agreed to concede that round to Jesus and said they didn't know. Jesus said, Then neither will I answer your question. Jesus told another story to the people. A man planted a vineyard. He handed it over to farmhands and went off on a trip. He was gone a long time. In time, he sent a servant back to the farmhands to collect the profits, but they beat him up and sent him off empty-handed. He decided to try again and sent another servant. That one they beat black and blue and sent him off empty-handed. He tried a third time. They worked that servant over from head to foot and dumped him in the street. Then the owner of the vineyard said, I know what I'll do. I'll send my beloved son. They're bound to respect my son. But when the farmhands saw him coming, they quickly put their heads together. This is our chance. This is the heir. Let's kill him and have it all to ourselves. They killed him and threw him over the fence. What do you think the owner of the vineyard will do? Right, he'll come and get rid of everyone. Then he'll assign the care of the vineyard to others. Those who were listening said, oh no, he'd never do that. But Jesus didn't back down. Why then do you think this was written? That stone the masons threw out, it's now the cornerstone. Anyone falling over that stone will break every bone in his body. If the stone falls on anyone, he'll be smashed to smithereens. The religion scholars and high priests wanted to lynch him on the spot, but they were intimidated by public opinion. They knew the story was about them. Watching for a chance to get him, they sent spies who posed as honest inquirers, hoping to trick him into saying something that would get him in trouble with the law. So they asked him, Teacher, we know that you're honest and straightforward when you teach, that you don't pander to anyone but teach the way of God accurately. Tell us, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? He knew they were laying for him and said, Show me a coin. Now, this engraving, who does it look like and what does it say? Caesar, they said. Jesus said, Then give Caesar what is his and give God what is his. Try as they might, they couldn't trap him into saying anything incriminating. His answer caught them off guard and left them speechless. Some Sadducees came up. This is the Jewish party that denies any possibility of resurrection. They asked, Teacher, Moses wrote us that if a man dies and leaves a wife but no child, his brother is obligated to marry her and give her children. Well, there once were seven brothers. The first took a wife. He died childless. The second married her and died, then the third, and eventually all seven had their turn but no child. After all that, the wife died. That wife now in the resurrection, whose wife is she? All seven married her. Jesus said, marriage is a major preoccupation here, but not there. Those who are included in the resurrection of the dead will no longer be concerned with marriage, nor of course with death. They will have better things to think about if you can believe it. All ecstasies and intimacies then will be with God. Even Moses exclaimed about resurrection at the burning bush saying, God, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. God isn't the God of dead men, but of the living. To him, all are alive. Some of the religious scholars said, teacher, that's a great answer. For a while anyway, no one dared to put questions to him. Then he put a question to them. How is it that they say that the Messiah is David's son? In the book of Psalms, David clearly says, God said to my master, 
Sit here at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David here designates the Messiah as my master. So how can the Messiah also be his son? With everybody listening, Jesus spoke to his disciples. Watch out for the religion scholars. They love to walk around in academic gowns, preen in the radiance of public flattery, bask in prominent positions, sit at the head table at every church function. And all the time they are exploiting the weak and helpless. The longer their prayers, the worse they get, but they'll pay for it in the end. Luke 21. Just then he looked up and saw the rich people dropping offerings in the collection plate. Then he saw a poor widow put in two pennies. He said, The plain truth is that this widow has given by far the largest offering today. All these others made offerings that they'll never miss. She gave extravagantly what she couldn't afford. She gave her all. One day people were standing around talking about the temple, remarking how beautiful it was, the splendor of its stonework and memorial gifts. Jesus said, all this you're admiring so much. The time is coming when every stone in that building will end up in a heap of rubble. They asked him, teacher, when is this going to happen? What clue will we get that it's about to take place? He said, watch out for the doomsday deceivers. Many leaders are going to show up with forged identities claiming I'm the one or the end is near. Don't fall for any of that. When you hear of wars and uprisings, keep your head and don't panic. This is routine history and no sign of the end. He went on, nation will fight nation and ruler fight ruler over and over. Huge earthquakes will occur in various places. There will be famines. You'll think at times that the very sky is falling. But before any of this happens, they'll arrest you, hunt you down and drag you to court and jail. It will go from bad to worse, dog eat dog, everyone at your throat because you carry my name. You'll end up on the witness stand called to testify. Make up your mind right now not to worry about it. I'll give you the words and wisdom that will reduce all your accusers to stammers and stutters. You'll even be turned in by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends. Some of you will be killed. There's no telling who will hate you because of me. Even so, every detail of your body and soul, even the hairs of your head, is in my care. Nothing of you will be lost. Staying with it, that's what is required. Stay with it to the end. You won't be sorry, you'll be saved. When you see soldiers camped all around Jerusalem, then you'll know that she is about to be devastated. If you're living in Judea at the time, run for the hills. If you're in the city, get out quickly. If you're out in the fields, don't go home to get your coat. This is the day of reckoning. Everything written about it will come to a head. Pregnant and nursing mothers will have it especially hard, incredible misery, torrential rage, people dropping like flies, people dragged off to prisons, Jerusalem under the boot of barbarians until the nations finish what was given them to do. It will seem like all hell is broken loose, sun, moon, stars, earth, sea, in an uproar, and everyone all over the world in a panic, the wind knocked out of them by the threat of doom, the powers that be quaking. And then, then, They'll see the Son of Man welcomed in grand style, a glorious welcome. When all this starts to happen, up on your feet, stand tall with your heads high. Help is on the way. He told them a story. Look at a fig tree, any tree for that matter. When the leaves begin to show, one look tells you that summer is right around the corner. The same here. When you see these things happen, you know God's kingdom is about here. Don't brush this off. I'm not just saying this for some future generation, but for this one too, these things will happen. Sky and earth will wear out. My words won't wear out. But be on your guard. Don't let the sharp edge of your expectation get dulled by parties and drinking and shopping. Otherwise, that day is going to take you by complete surprise, spring on you suddenly like a trap, for it's going to come on everyone, everywhere, at once. So whatever you do, don't fall asleep at the wheel. Pray constantly that you will have the strength and wits to make it through everything that's coming and end up on your feet before the Son of Man. He spent his days in the temple teaching, but his nights out on the mountain called Olives. All the people were up at the crack of dawn to come to the temple and listen to him. That is Luke 19 through 21. Let's pray together. Jesus, I thank you that you um, care to give us heads up about stuff, (laughs) that these warnings we experience in Luke 21, we can see some of them and wonder if that's what's happening right now and also know that that what that means is is you're coming back. What that means is that you're right around the corner. Um, and so we say, yes, Jesus, come on back. <laughs> come on back and make things right. Um, 
we love you. We trust you. We trust you with our lives. We trust you with our futures. And, and we trust you in this story and in what you're telling us today. Um, we want to be like um, the widow at the beginning that just gives out of what she has, even if it's very little. So even in times where we're worried or afraid or it feels like um, we don't know what's going on in the world, we still want to be givers. So teach us how to do that too as we wait for your return. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.